The mystery of the ghost rocket has persisted for many years, with not only thousands of sightings, but several craft witnessed crashing, apparently leaving nothing more than a crater. First sighted in 1946, they were initially explained away as meteors. However, as the sightings continued, this explanation was realized by many as unlikely. Witness making incredible maneuvers, with them almost never being seen during meteor showers. The theory of them originating from the former German rocket facility at Peenemuden was put forward. Vivid German films uncovered by Allied occupation men tell the story of the V-2 rocket through enemy eyes. In a last desperate attempt to escape defeat, German science threw everything it had into the perfection of V-2. Hurtling through the stratosphere at 3,000 miles an hour to fall on London, this was the peak of 15 years of German scientific research. With them henceforth being put down to long-range missile tests by the Soviets, undoubtedly due to their ability to maneuver. This explanation would conveniently give the Swedish army motive to issue a directive, stating that newspapers were not to report the location of ghost rocket sightings, nor any information regarding the direction or speed of the objects. This information, they reasoned, was vital for evaluation purposes to the nation assumed to be performing the tests. This explanation would make complete sense if rocket debris had indeed been found, subsequently revealed to an entire nation, whom at this point were all trying to figure out what these things were. Why would the military force a complete media blackout without any publicly acknowledged recovery of debris? Along with the bizarre reports of their crashes, could this instead be indication of a cover-up? The early Soviet origins theory was subsequently rejected by British and US military investigators. According to them, quote, no recognizable rocket fragments were ever recovered. And according to sightings, the objects displayed some combination of leaving no exhaust trail, moving too slowly, flying horizontally, traveling and maneuvering in formation, and appearing to be silent." End quote. One crash in particular occurred on July 19, 1946, into Lake Komiov. Witnesses reported a gray rocket-shaped object crashing into the lake. Alas, a three-week military search reported nothing. Immediately after the investigation, the Swedish Air Force officer who led the search, Carl Gustav Bartol, submitted a report in which he stated that the lake had indeed been disturbed, but nothing recovered. Quote, there are many indications that the Kolmyarv object disintegrated itself. The object was probably manufactured in a lightweight material, possibly a kind of magnesium alloy that would disintegrate easily and not give indications on our instruments. When Bartol was later interviewed in 1984 by Swedish researcher Klaus Vaughn, he insisted what people saw were real physical objects. On December 3, 1946, a memo was drafted which stated, quote, Nearly 100 impacts have been reported and 30 pieces of debris have been received and examined by Swedish National Defense Research Institute. The debris was later said to be meteorite fragments, end quote. What do you think about the ghost rockets? Meteorites? Missiles? Or perhaps something else? We find their possible origins highly compelling. This ancient cemetery within present-day Hungary has perplexed anthropologists for the past few decades. Amongst the remains of some 51 individuals was the discovery of many apparently human yet elongated skulls. Although many elongated skulls unearthed around the world are mysteriously absent human skull napping, indicative of skull binding, an ancient practice once initiated at a young age. These skulls, however, do appear to have these natural human napping patterns. Yet the mystery of their origins, even after DNA sequencing, has merely deepened. Individuals including adult males, females, and children had, quote, artificially deformed skulls with depressions shaped by bandage wrappings, end quote, making this place one of the largest concentrations of this cultural phenomenon ever found in Europe. Curiously, the strontium isotope ratios here are significantly more variable than those of other remains, 
including animal and prehistoric burials, which have since been uncovered in the same geographic region. This indicating that these mysterious people lived elsewhere during their childhood, yet where they originally came from remains a complete mystery. Furthermore, carbon and nitrogen isotope data attest to remarkable contributions of millet in their diet, although all the remains have now been dismissed as human. Intriguingly, some photographic studies of certain remains of particular interest are yet to be publicly disclosed. If human origins indeed be the case, it still does not answer the question as to where this ritual originated from, or why it seemingly permeated many of the world's countries, such as Germany, Malta, Russia, Hungary, along with many others. Were these ancient people trying to emulate a now lost civilization? Possibly unknown ancient beings, they and many others throughout antiquity, not only perceived as, but depicted as gods? Additionally, why are there so many mysteries surrounding this practice? Why is there such mystery surrounding the crystal skulls? And why are so many skulls we have personally examined seemingly absent normal human growth patterns? Were ancient aliens possibly found amongst these individuals within Hungary? We find the ongoing discovery highly compelling. There is a growing number of evidence being correlated worldwide every day, increasingly adding the pressure upon modern historical paradigms, incredibly strong arguments for the chronology of man being vastly incorrect. Archaeological proofs that our history on this planet has not only been massively underestimated, but unfortunately, due to its doctrine for creation stimulating a large stream of wealth, individuals have become transfixed on this following's flow of financial backing, going to great lengths to protect these investments. This has resulted in a steadfast position by those in the upper echelons of historical, geological, even artistic academic circles. A seemingly immovable so-called conclusion in regards to all developed, already printed, funded investigative current claims to all historical sites. Yet their ignorance to that which disproves said hypothesis, being their Achilles heel, as all near smoking gun evidence to the contrary of their claims, seemingly fear to be approached, we feel as they would lack the ability to disprove such data as accurate. With qualified persons in positions of trust, having their careers ruined for refusing to reject their own findings. The Bering Strait being on example, the migratory land bridge theory crucial to these funded, upheld theories' timelines, with man claimed to have entered Europe across it at a precise time in Earth's history, yet it now being a theory proven inaccurate in a number of areas, along with countless other examples exposing the true magnitude of this current historical deception. In our opinion, initially arising from the potential profit seen by some as a hybrid form of New World Religious Origin Theory. It has, however, now gained a complete monopoly over the curriculum giving supposed definitive explanatory claimed factual information about relics one simply could confidently convey unless undertaking in deception as if attempting to create an illusion of all-knowing. This attitude of all-knowing add to this actively ignoring that which clearly contradicts said claims of ruins, and their historical account as a whole, proves beyond doubt they are partaking in a ruse. Yet I digress. For as initially mentioned, growing evidence worldwide is disproving currently mainstream-held opinions with our next subject of interest symbolically making academia fall on their own sword. Their own dating of these unexplained sites made before they were discovered elsewhere. Upon in-depth study, or indeed past knowledge of similar anomalies, one can link proof that sites on separate continents and hemispheres of each other are identical in form. A self-inflicted faux pas, exposure of academics' inability to accurately date sites, or indeed mankind. The keyhole graves, 
a mass of which has recently been found along an ancient road within Saudi Arabia. Yet amazingly, when we covered these graves before, it wasn't another continent these were found on, predating oceanic travel, but one identical in shape, possibly on Mars. Found throughout Asia and notoriously forbidden to be entered, now, however, the Saudis seem keen to investigate so that their inhabitants may soon be exposed. Could this be a mass grave of ancient aliens, once buried in this unusual style, one we also believe could possibly be resting upon the Martian surface? We find such possibility hugely fascinating. In the past, we have covered many ancient anomalies out-of-place artifacts, and unexplainable features, all hinting at an ancient high technology which ancient man once possessed. An ability to create tremendous heat and thus advanced metallurgy, and in some cases seemingly turning stone to magma, a knowledge and technology which at some point within history became lost. One upart in particular is the slab of Beit Sharim an enormous glass slab dated at many thousands of years old. Yet to have created such an enormous piece of ancient glass would have taken incredible heat in an incredibly large furnace. Coincidentally, all sharing an inexplicable similarity with the collection of artifacts which are the focus of this video. Discovered in 2019 on Melbourne Beach, off the coast of Florida, a total of seven artifacts, including the ancient Peruvian death mask, were found. After detailed analysis, the composition of metals used in the manufacture of the artifacts have baffled scientists. Created using copper, gold, and silver, yet what stunned those investigating the items was the presence of iridium. Not only is iridium incredibly rare on Earth, with most found within meteorites, but its melting point is also yet another mystery. For as how the Inca apparently created them, if indeed the Inca were responsible in the first place, is yet to be explained. Dated at over 12,000 years ago, some of the artifacts clearly depict known Incan gods, one of which being Viracocha. Whether these beliefs were merely adopted, like the many unexplainable ruins we regularly cover, and claim were merely re-inhabited is unknown. Yet what we do know is that the melting point of iridium, 2446 degrees Celsius, thus any artifact dated to these tremendous ages, yet created with such tremendous temperatures, furnaces and metallurgies claimed as undiscovered during or prior to their claimed eras or ages of construction mean that they simply shouldn't exist, yet they do. The question is how. How did the Inca acquire such rare elements? How did they manage to accomplish such temperatures and work the metals at such an early age within known history? We find their possible true origins highly compelling.